So I was wrong about electrical engineering. I thought it was a great major and that's what made me get a bachelor's, master's and PhD in electrical engineering. I even started this YouTube channel with the hope of trying to get people to jump on this because I thought I found something amazing and I want to share my knowledge with other people. But lately I realized something fundamentally wrong with the electrical engineering major, engineering in general, and just like college as a whole. And I even stopped posting for two months to think very deeply about this before I make my next video. To make things worse, the recession has not been making things any easier with all the tech layoffs and all the engineers out there not able Able to get jobs or find better jobs that made me think about it even more deeply now don't worry towards the end i'm going to tell you what to do if you're trying to get an internship or a job during this recession or at least increase the odds and i also have amazing news there's one thing that i was not so wrong about with regards to electrical engineering in fact i have an absolute banger i want to share with you in a little bit but before we talk about that let's talk about why study electrical engineering in the first place most people go to college so they can learn something that they can get a job with and there's many jobs you can get with an electrical engineering degree in fact there's up to 15 different fields that i was able to carve out I even wrote a whole book about this where I nailed down 15 different career paths for electrical engineering. And while I do talk about all the subfields in this book, and I talk about power systems, telecommunications, electronics, and all the different ways you can get a job with an electrical engineering degree, there's one thing I have written down here that's more relevant than ever, which says either start your own company or basically use your engineering skills to do something else. Now, if you watch my previous videos, you'll see that the reason I push engineering degrees so hard is because of their transferable skills. Frankly, to me, I don't really care whether you get a job as an engineer or not. What I care about is you developing a skill set that's going to help you in anything that you do. And some of these skills include problem solving, decision making, critical thinking, being able to isolate variables and attack problems, innovation, being able to work with people, being able to manage projects, being able to communicate your ideas, being able to research things and learn things from scratch, and being able to look at the big picture of the project as well as paying attention to the little details. Now, this set of skills is super profitable if you know how to use it. And one of the most important skills also is the high pain threshold and the ability to endure harsh pain for very long periods of time. That's literally an engineering degree. So going forward, I really think there are two different paths that you can take with this type of degree, which both are equally exciting. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So over the last few years, there's been a revolution in the way people do business and run companies. It used to be that companies are very large and basically corporations were the only thing we ever really knew as companies. And that's where you would go and get a job. However, over the last few years, there's been a rise to the one person company or the one person business, meaning as a one person, you can run and sustain a business entirely on your own, most likely online. And I first came across this concept in the book, The Almanac of Naval Ravikant, which is an excellent book you absolutely have to read, where he did imagine a world where there's 7 billion people and there's 7 billion companies where each person run their own company based on their own skill set and set of knowledge. And we just spend time teaching each other what we know and we charge each other for that knowledge. I'm sure you've seen this online. You've seen people like set up online stores. You've seen people set up like consulting companies or coaching companies or things of that nature. And the thing that blew my mind is that frankly, most of these people are just really good at like BS sales and marketing and engineers can really crush them. For example, one thing that I've always noticed myself do is that I always learn principles from engineering and I try to apply them in real life, whether to productivity or efficiency or just being able to build things as quickly as possible. And I would very often have conversations with my entrepreneur friends where I would tell them, hey, why don't you tweak that a little bit? Or why don't you make that thing a little bit? And I would just do some minor tweaks and it would just make their business way more efficient. And I realized, whoa, besides being able to make antennas and design circuits and do all these cool things, I can actually take those skills and apply them to make businesses very efficient. So I started a consulting company on the side where I literally just help businesses basically grow much faster. Literally by making minor tweaks and in inputs, outputs, metrics, efficiency, feedback, and that's it. Now, I am still a full-time PhD student and I'm still priority of my work is on designing antennas and doing research and graduating. But I found it super cool that I can do something on the side that can make me money that uses something that I love, which is engineering and engineering frameworks. And that was the epitome of transferable skills. And for that reason, I really think now is the best time ever, ever, ever to study electrical engineering or any engineering major. Because I'm a realist, I know that you probably want to get a job with an electrical engineering and you most likely will i mean electrical engineering jobs are not going anywhere anytime soon we're still going to build planes we're still going to build cars we're still going to build wearables we're still going to build technology we're still going to build software there's going to be tons of jobs available so don't worry about that but the exciting news is that if you're the type of student who's still feeling very lost or you don't really know what you want to do and you're a little concerned all i gotta say is just focus on the skills focus on learning as much as you can solving as many problems as you can and finding the domains where you enjoy solving these problems and i promise in the long term that's going to pay 
off and you don't know what that looks like it's just gonna unfold later on now i also wanted to give you guys a bit of tough love and that like when, when times get harder you just gotta work harder for example a few months back i made a video about my productivity system and the things i do to stay super productive and organized and some people commented and said oh that's toxic productivity that's like so toxic and i really don't think that's the case because one i enjoy what i do i enjoy the work but two because i understand how the world is rapidly changing part of me is paranoid about acquiring skills and being so good at what i do in multiple areas that i'm never ever like begging for a job you know so i'm gonna again embrace the mantra that's in every single video that i have which is be so good they can't ignore you or develop skills so good that it makes it very hard for someone to turn you down whether that's for an engineering job or anything else so if you're trying to get an internship or get a job and you're struggling and you're wondering why that is well maybe your portfolio needs to be a little bit better maybe in only one week or two weeks you can go carve out an entire project and put on your resume maybe you can build a circuit using arduino maybe you can download ansys hfss the student version and design an antenna put that on your portfolio maybe you're just going to need to increase the volume instead of applying for five jobs you need to apply to 100 instead of talking to one recruiter you need to talk to 20. during hard times and competitive times the harsh reality is that you just got to be so much better than everyone else and you get better than everyone else by basically working on the right things and working harder and for that you need to be productive you need to be organized you need to be efficient you need to have the right systems in place if you're on instagram all day if you're on tiktok all day i have no idea what you're doing if you're scrambling to find an internship and you're still struggling you need more volume you need to improve your resume you need to do something you need to do something to increase the odds and trust me i made this mistake in the past where i would just sit sit there and wait for someone to come and save me no one's gonna come and save you you have to go and do the work and while there's no one there to save you there's someone to believe in you i believe in you you can do it now i did make a video a while back about what i would do to get an internship especially if i did not have an experience so i'll put a link to that below and again sorry i have not posted for quite some time i've been working on this nasa proposal that's taking a lot of my time i've been thinking a lot deeply about the things i want to do and it's just been absolutely hectic but i promise if you guys like these videos i'm going to keep uploading as always now before you go and get an internship with electrical engineering you want to make sure that electrical engineering is actually for you that's actually a thing you should be doing and there's five traits that you need which i made a video about a while back so you can check it out over here peace love